Charges have been announced for the six people arrested Saturday in protest over Cop City, a police training facility proposed to be placed in a wooded area near Atlanta, Georgia, in the fatal police shooting of an activist earlier that week. According to CNN, they each face four felony charges, domestic terrorism, arson in the first degree, criminal damage in the second degree, and interference with government property, according to police. Manuel Tehran, whose chosen name was Tortuguita, or Little, or Little Turtle, was tragically killed by the police in protest of Cop City. Experts say this shooting was unprecedented in the history of environmental activism. Author and activist Marianne Williamson joins us now to weigh in. Hi, Marianne. Hi, how are you? Great, thanks for joining us. Uh, so how Thank do you, you feel about the treatment of these protesters? Oh, I think this situation is extremely dangerous. I think it brings up two issues that are extremely concerning. First of all, it has to do with the killing of an environmental activist. We've seen these kinds of things happen internationally for years. We know they happen in places like Latin America. It has never happened here before. We need to look at this. I was noticing even on the CNN report, it said that the protester Tortuquita um, had shot first. There is no evidence of this. The article just sort of said, according to police, they have provided no evidence. The police camera was not on. By the way, those things should not be turn offable, right? So we don't have evidence. There should be an independent investigation that does not come from the police department over what happened. Everything you hear about this young man makes it very, very difficult to believe that he shot first at a policeman. That's number one. So right now what they're doing is they're trying to criminalize the environmental activists rather than asking ourselves the reasonable questions about what happened here. The second thing that is extremely alarming is the fact that they were building this cop city to begin with. Can we talk about this? So you have 300 acres of forest land, which is very important, not only uh, for the environment. You know, I come from an area of Houston where there were all these terrible floods that were because of overdevelopment. So you need things like this forest land, okay? And, and when, when the uh, announcement was made that this cop city was going to be built, there was huge, huge argument against it from the people in that community and throughout Atlanta. What are we doing building a $90 million cop city? This is not the army, this is not the military. Who, who do we need? They said it's for, um, to boost police morale and to help with recruitment. Can we all be adults enough to realize we have some problems as it is? We need to talk about legitimate police reform in cities like Atlanta. And even though they say, oh, this is going to be involved with police reform, there is no evidence of this whatsoever. So the very fact that they're going to go into a forest, cut down 300 acres of land in order to build a $90 million facility that's a cop city. I have been to this kind of facility in another country where there was there were, mili there were legitimate military purposes for something like this. This is not a military facility. Who is it that these people need to spend $90 million to figure out how to, how to what? So the militarization of the police is very concerning. This has been going on uh, really broadly since 9-11, and the American people need to really be on top of this. You know, there are a lot of things in this country about which Americans say, oh, it couldn't happen here. And one of them is police state. Let's not kid ourselves. A facility like this is infrastructure for a police state, and we should be very, very concerned. Yeah, I mean, there has been this interesting shift among conservatives to have more scrutiny um, uh, for the police and the other uh, prongs of kind of the security infrastructure after 1-6. There was some feeling that some of the protesters were um, unfairly or harshly targeted um, because they were caught up in their surveillance at the time. They were told by the president that it was okay to protest. And then some of them got some pretty significant sentences. And there have been comparisons between how they were treated and how various Black Lives Matter protests were treated. But, you know, Robbie, I'm curious what you think about this from a libertarian perspective as well. This is a huge amount of money being spent. There doesn't seem to have been a real argument about how this will do things that are in the public interest interest, like bringing down crime. It seems like it's a recruitment effort, uh, kind of like a cop camp. There are these environmental consequences. Mm -hmm. And there is this ratcheting up of this authoritarian uh, police state in conjunction with heightening penalties for protests. We've seen this in the environmental movement and beyond. Some people even on the right are saying that this is what happened in the context of the 1-6 protesters. What do you make of this? Yeah, I mean, it's important to know what kind of training the cops are receiving, because obviously I want cops that are well trained to um, to not not 
to, to defuse tense situations when they're when they're called into tense situations. What you often have is police being trained to be more militarized um, and also being given more military type equipment, right? More more uh, more SWAT patrol type stuff, and then then their interactions with citizens become more aggressive and more akin to you know a, a conquering army, just like you said, Marianne, a police state, a, a you know an, an occupying force, um, which is really bad and really dangerous. Dangerous. You know, the footage of, you know, no-knock raids in the middle of the night and uh, people being hauled out of their beds and being disoriented and confused and then not responding properly because they're half asleep and, and there's such dangerous, reckless situations. And then we've seen so many, we've seen, you know, mass shooting incidents, right, where, where the police, they have all that tactical gear and all that military-style training and they sit around for hours while uh, while the, the shooter's yeah. locked in the classroom with the kids. It's disgusting. So, uh, so I, I think there is a real... Um, a, a real pushback against this kind of thing but from, from America. This is the other question. Well, Marianne, I'm sure you remember back in 2020, despite the huge numbers of people in the streets over the killing of George Floyd, Joe Biden, in the context of his campaign, came out and said we need to fund the police more. And a number of Democratic candidates, including Stacey Abrams, in the context of her campaign, wrangled a lot of people, including black Americans in Georgia, um, black men in particular, for saying, well, she wants to fund the, the, fund the police more as well. Is there any pushback for this if the Democratic Party itself is apparently co-signing the, the continued in increases in funding for the police. We need to have more adult conversations. That's why I appreciate what we're doing here right now. Both left-wing and right-wing libertarian perspective, we're all agreeing. We should all be concerned about the militarization of the police. All of us should be. And we should see also the connection between this and our defense budget. What happens? What, when people ask, well, what are we spending all this money on? Why all this money to Raytheon and Northrop Grumman and Boeing? They say, oh, guys, you got to have this new equipment. The one you have from two years ago is outdated. So they say, well, what are we going to do with the old equipment? and they say send it to the boys back home and so like Robbie was saying you have people all this military equipment in 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 domestic police and the and these guys show up even in this uh, Manuel Tehran case why were they there like a SWAT team so um, uh, to hear the Democrats uh, so afraid that the Americans can't handle a serious conversation and to run away from a slogan, which was a stupid slogan. We should reform the police. When Robbie was talking about better training, when you compare the training of an American policeman to, let's say, a German, we should be talking about the fact that in Germany, for, not just in Germany, but throughout the, uh, European uh, democracies, you have police that use far less lethal force. Americans are always saying, why didn't they just shoot him in the leg? Why did they have to kill that person? They use far less uh, uh, lethal force. They have far better results. And their police people are far better educated. We train people for like six weeks and put them out with all this incredible power, which, as Robbie was also saying, is often they're not even using it to actually get the bad guys, such as in Uvalde. Although I'm not trying to you know, paint that with a broad brush about all police. However, the idea is that in some place like Germany, it's two years. It's serious education. So uh, what we should be talking about is reforming the police. But when you're talking about $90 million for a new cop city, as you called it, Brie, there's nothing there about reform in anything but, oh, yeah, we're going to work on police reform. And they have given us no proof uh, that anything like that is going to be happening. That's the serious conversation uh, that all, all Americans should be having. It shouldn't even be an issue of right versus versus left. Proper oversight of the police. When you're talking about what, what, what we should be concerned about as a rogue institution, that's the one where we should be very, very concerned. Because things are happening, no matter who you are, on the right or the left, that really make any intelligent, concerned America go, what happened there? That person was stopped at a traffic light and they were killed. And can we talk about how often they were black? So uh, we all know this, and these are the serious conversations we should be having. Mm. Well, we appreciate you joining us for some of those serious conversations, as always, here, Marianne. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm always glad to be here. Thank you. And we'll have more Rising for you after this.